The Korean zombie is one of those fighters who is hard not to love. Because despite him not speaking English, he captivated the MMA world with his exciting style of fighting. But not only was he exciting, he was also very good, and during his career, he was able to fight for the UFC featherweight championship on two occasions. And aside from those two title fights, he was a perennial top 10 guy at 145 for years. And this was especially huge for South Korea, because although the country had produced some top level MMA talent, I would say out of all of them, the Korean zombie reached the greatest heights in the sport. And when you tie in his style of fighting with his brand that includes really cool merch and an awesome walkout song, it's understandable why he developed somewhat of a cult following. But although he became a top MMA fighter, he was never able to reach the pinnacle by becoming a UFC champion. So how good was the Korean zombie actually? The fighter whose real name is Chan Sung Jung began his MMA career on June 24, 2007 at the age of 19. Prior to his debut, he began training in Hapkido to fend off bullies. And eventually, Eventually, this led to him training in other martial arts. His love for fighting made him want to become an MMA fighter, so that's what he did in 2007 by turning pro and competing in promotions in South Korea and Japan. He quickly gained attention for his aggressive fighting style and submission skills. Within just two years, he had amassed an impressive record of 9 wins and 1 loss. In April 2010, Jung made his debut in the WEC because although he did want to fight in the UFC, the promotion did not broadcast their fights to South Korea. But the WEC did, so in his first fight with them, he faced Leonard Garcia in a fight that would become an instant classic. This was a crazy back and forth war between these two and although many believe the Korean zombie did enough to get the win, it was Leonard who won by split decision. Despite this loss, the Korean zombie was on many people's radars after this fight as this fight was not only awarded a fight of the night bonus, but it was also a contender for fight of the year. Unfortunately, he was unable to build off of this momentum because after this defeat, the Korean zombie fought George Roop and this was probably the career highlight for George aside from his future win against Brian Bowles because he absolutely flatlines the Korean zombie by knocking him out with a head kick in the second round. These were the only two fights the Korean zombie had in the WEC because the promotion got bought out and merged with the UFC. So although these two fights were very memorable for different reasons, they were also defeats and being on a losing skid heading into the biggest MMA promotion in the world was not a good look. So with his momentum at a low, there wasn't much promise for the Korean zombie heading into the UFC. But man, did he change that narrative quickly. The Korean Zombie made his UFC debut on March 26, 2011, and in his debut, he fought his former foe, Leonard Garcia. In contrast to their first fight, this one was more one-sided as the Korean Zombie was able to avoid getting into a brawl with Leonard, and instead, he was the one pressing forward more and connecting with the better shots. Eventually, the action went down, and with 10 seconds remaining in the second round, the Korean Zombie locked up a twister that forced Leonard to tap. This was very impressive not only because it was a win for the Korean Zombie, but also because this was the first twister in UFC history. This of course earned him the submission of the night bonus, and in his post-fight interview, the Korean Zombie said he learned how to do the twister by watching Eddie Bravo videos on YouTube. This UFC debut was huge, and it was definitely going to be hard for the Korean Zombie to make an even bigger statement in his next fight. But that's exactly what he did at UFC 140 when he fought former title challenger Mark Hominick. Because despite this fight being in Mark's backyard as it took place in Canada, the Korean zombie starched him immediately as he connected with a right hand that dropped Mark and after some more punches, the ref stepped in. The fight lasted only 7 seconds, and it earned the Korean zombie a bonus for knockout of the night. So at this point, the Korean zombie was on many people's radars because not only was he proving that he was a true contender, but he also showed that he was a must-watch fighter due to how exciting he was. And his next test was going to be a big one as he was going up against fellow rising featherweight, Dustin in Poirier. This not only was a fight that was going to determine who would fight for the featherweight championship, but it was also one that was expected to be a very entertaining one due to how both men fight. And that's what we got in this fight, which was the main event for a UFC fight night card. Also fun fact, this was the first time the Korean zombie walked out to zombie by the cranberries. Anyways, although Dustin gave a strong effort in this one, the Korean zombie was controlling the action for the most part as he found success with his striking in the clinch with takedowns, ground and pound, and submission attempts. The Korean Zombie was putting on a masterclass performance and eventually, he topped this all off with a darts choke in round 4 that put Dustin to sleep. This win earned the Korean Zombie a fight of the night and submission of the night bonus. And with these 3 impressive wins at featherweight, he was the clear number 1 contender. But the UFC still wanted to give him one more fight since the champion, Jose Aldo, was set to fight Anthony Pettis. So at UFC 162, the Korean Zombie was going to fight Ricardo Lamas. But after Anthony Pettis pulled out of his fight with Jose 
Jose Aldo due to injury, the Korean Zombie became the replacement. And I'm not going to lie, heading into this fight, the Korean Zombie's momentum really got affected because while all this matchmaking was going on, he was out for more than a year. Plus, this fight against Jose was in Rio de Janeiro, which meant the Korean Zombie was in enemy territory. But for the most part, it was a fairly even fight as both men went back and forth on the feet. There were no significant moments that happened while there, but Jose had the edge by securing a couple of takedowns. But then the momentum changed big time in the fourth after the Korean Zombie threw an overhand right, because this caused his shoulder to dislocate and it was clear the Korean Zombie was compromised. This led to Jose going all out for the finish, which he was able to get by kicking the shoulder Older, bringing the fight down and then throwing ground and pound that forced the ref to step in. This was an unfortunate defeat for the Korean Zombie, especially because of his shoulder injury which kept him out of action for more than a year before being set to return in October of 2014 to fight Akira Khorasani. But the fight never happened as the Korean Zombie pulled out due to injury and in mid-October, he announced that he was going to begin his two-year mandatory military service with the South Korean Army. This led to the Korean Zombie's longest layoff of his career as he was out for three and a half years following the Jose Aldo fight. But then he came back in February of 2017 to fight Dennis Bermudez, and the ring rust proved to not be a factor for the Korean Zombie as he came back with a bang by folding Dennis in the first round with an uppercut. He was back and also got a performance of the night bonus for this win. Although he was supposed to come back 5 months later at UFC 214 to fight Ricardo Lamas, the Korean Zombie pulled out due to a knee injury and once again, he had another layoff that lasted more than a year. He came back in November of 2018 to fight former lightweight champion Frankie Edgar. But after Frankie pulled out due to injury, he was replaced by Yair Rodriguez. And this was a fun fight that saw both men trade on the feet throughout the five rounds. Although Yair connected with some nice shots, overall the Korean Zombie controlled most of the action and heading into the final round, he was up three rounds to one on two of the judges scorecards. And for a majority of the fifth round, the Korean Zombie continued to find success. But in the final 10 seconds of the fight, the two fighters decided to go for a final brawl. And and unfortunately for the Korean Zombie, he got caught with a crazy reverse elbow from Yair that knocked him out in the final second of the fight. Yes, it was a very unfortunate defeat for the Korean Zombie, but at least he got a fight of the night bonus out of it. Following this defeat, the Korean Zombie came back 7 months later and fought Hinato Moikano. And this was a quick fight that saw the Korean Zombie drop Hinato with a huge overhand right, and after some more ground and pound, the ref stepped in. The fight lasted 58 seconds and the Korean Zombie received a performance of the night bonus. In December of 2019, he fought Frankie Edgar in Busan, South Korea, making it the Korean Zombie's first fight back in his home country since 2008. And what a homecoming this was for the Korean Zombie as he rocked Frankie in the first 60 seconds of the fight with punches. This led to the action going down where the Korean Zombie threw ground and pound and tried to lock up a rear naked choke. Credit to Frankie for surviving and getting back up, but the Korean Zombie continued to connect with shots that hurt him again, and after going down, the ref stepped in. 10 months later, the Korean Zombie fought Brian and Ortega. The two had somewhat of a beef prior to this fight after Brian slapped the Korean Zombies translator Jay Park at a UFC event. But this quickly fizzled out and both men were cool with each other prior to their fight. Now although the Korean Zombie was the favorite heading into this fight due to Brian coming back from a two year layoff, it was Brian who was controlling the action in this fight. And what made it more shocking was that he did it by outstriking the Korean Zombie which no one expected since Brian's expertise was his Jiu Jitsu. But in this fight he put on a strike masterclass and after 5 rounds, he won by unanimous decision. Following this defeat, the Korean Zombie fought Dan Ige, and in his first and only win in the UFC by unanimous decision, the Korean Zombie looked great in this fight, especially with his wrestling in top control. And after this fight, he received his black belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. And to make matters even better, the Korean Zombie got a shot at the featherweight championship after Max Holloway pulled out due to injury. So at UFC 273, he fought the champion Alexander Volkanovsky. And this proved to be a huge mismatch as Alexander absolutely battered the Korean Zombie on the feet. Credit to the Korean Zombie for displaying how tough he was, but he truly had no answers. This continued all the way up until early in the 4th when Herb Dean saw enough and decided to step in. It was one of those defeats that had many believe that the Korean Zombie should call it a career because he took that much damage. Even he himself said it was over for him because if he wasn't fighting to become the champion, then what was the point? So with this entire narrative going on, many believed this was the last fight of the Korean Zombie's career. But then it was announced that he will be fighting former champion Max Holloway, a fight that both men have always wanted since they've both been top guys for a long time but never crossed paths. And for the Korean Zombie, despite being the underdog heading into this fight, he saw this as one last opportunity.
opportunity to get another shot at the title. So on August 26, 2023 in Kalang, Singapore, the two went head to head. And man, if it wasn't for copyright, I definitely would have shown you guys the Korean Zombies walkout because it was absolutely epic to see him walk out to Zombie by the Cranberries and having the entire crowd sing along. And early on in this fight, he was finding some success on the feet, but the momentum really changed once Max dropped him in the second and looked close to finishing the fight with the Darts choke. But the Korean Zombie survived and continued to trade, but at this point, he didn't have many answers for Max. So in the third, he decided to go all out Zombie style. He rushed forward and swung with everything he had, but Max was able to evade his attacks before connecting with a huge right hand that knocked the Korean Zombie out. And with this defeat, the Korean Zombie put his gloves down in the cage and called it a career. And then when you add in that his walk out of the cage was him crying as the crowd sang Zombie by the Cranberries, we got one of the most emotional retirements in the history of the sport. And of course, in classic Zombie fashion, he received a fight of the night bonus. So after going 17 and 8, how good was the Korean Zombie actually? At the time of making this video, I would consider him as the greatest South Korean MMA fighter. Before, I gave that title to Dong Young Kim, but Kim was never able to fight for the title, and in terms of popularity, he never reached the heights that the Korean Zombie did. Because like I said in the beginning of this video, the Korean Zombie developed a cult following. People loved this guy, and a huge reason why was because of how entertaining he was inside of the cage. Out of his 12 fights in the UFC, only two of them went to the decision. People like finishers, and the Korean Zombie was someone who always went for them, and at times, he would be on the receiving end. But it never changed the way he fought. He was a true BMF. But that doesn't mean he wasn't skilled. Yes, he would move forward and swing wildly at times because he wasn't afraid to take shots. He was tough and there was no giving up from him. But wherever the fight went, the Korean Zombie was a threat. Of course, he was primarily a striker, but even on the ground, he was nasty with his ground and pound and submissions. He was the entire package. So why was he never able to become a UFC champion? Well, for one, he was losing to the best guys. Jose Aldo, Yair Rodriguez, Brian Ortega, then Alexander Volkanovsky and Max Holloway back to back in his final two fights of his career. There is no shame in losing to these guys. But another factor as to why he was never able to capture gold is because of timing. The guy got injured a lot throughout his career and at times, this definitely slowed down his momentum. But the longest layoff of his career occurred when he had to do his mandatory military service. This is something that many people point to as a what if. Because between the age of 26 and 29, the Korean zombie wasn't fighting and for many fighters, this is the prime of their careers. So many believe that if he never had to leave for the military, he most likely would have had a better chance at capturing UFC gold. And honestly, although this makes sense and very well could have been the case, at the same time, we don't know how injuries would have affected the Korean zombie during this time. Maybe this layoff was a good thing for him to rehabilitate his injuries and because of that, he came back as a fresher fighter. There is no exact answer for what could have been. But in the time that the Korean zombie was around, he put on a legendary career. Sure, he never became a champion, but he had a career that many fighters wish they could have. He was someone who was able to break barriers by becoming popular outside of his home country. And even now in South Korea, he is a massive star. Just check his YouTube numbers. Like most former South Korean MMA fighters, he is set post-retirement from MMA. And it couldn't have happened to a better man than the Korean Zombie, who many people not only love as a fighter, but also as a person. That's why I would give his MMA career a 9 out of 10. But what do you think? How good was the Korean Zombie actually? And what was your favorite moment from his career? But that's a lot for now, so I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.